As many of you already know, I'm a huge fan of Pixelmator Pro, not just for its photo manipulation and graphic design capabilities, but its integration with motion, its ability to export motion projects with fully intact text and shape layers opens up all kinds of creative possibilities for motion graphics. Today on MacBreak Studio, I'm going to show you how to make fully customizable map animations using a free website, Pixelmator Pro, and motion. Let's dive in. So I'm at a site called paintmaps.com. Everything here is free, which is fantastic. And we've got these nine different options for different kind of uh, maps and charts, and you can add your own statistical data to them. They're all interesting. I'm just going to start with this create world maps chart here, and then choose world continents map chart. And we get this chart with a legend and color coding. What's cool about this is you can completely customize it. So I'm going to click clear all to clear all of that existing data out. And then I'm just going to make my own legend. And you need to set a value. I'll set a value for 100 for the first one. And I'm just going to choose something silly like ice cream flavors. So I'll put mint chocolate chip in the first one, pistachio, cookie dough, and 400 butter pecan, just to get a sense of how this works. So you can see it's immediately filled in each of those names. And then we need to assign values to each of our different continents here. So I'll just add in numbers between 0 and 400. So I'll add 50, 125. It just has to be somewhere between the values, 230, 320. And then I'll add another 230 and 12. Doesn't really matter. I'll click Update Data. And now each of these is color coded based on the values. For instance, uh, we have North America here as 320, which is uh, between 300 and 400. So it's over 300. So it goes to the legend four, which is this uh, pink one right here for North America. So you can see how easy it is to create your own data set and color code different areas based on the values you choose and the labels you choose. Uh, from there, you can also change the color. So let's say I want the legend one to be more of a, a darker blue or maybe something like that. You can change all the colors. I'll scroll down. You can choose whether you don't want the borders. You can make the background transparent, but we can always do that in motion. So I'll leave that on. I do want to show the labels. We can always turn those off in motion. And I'm going to get rid of that drop shadow because it doesn't come through anyway, and we can do a better job in motion. So from there, I'm going to download the SVG option. And the reason I'm doing this is because we can create a vector uh, resolution independent version of this that we can zoom in on as much as we want to without it ever getting pixelated. So I'll choose that. And then in my downloads, I'll right click on that and choose to open it with Pixelmator Pro. The reason I'm using Pixelmator Pro is because you can't put SVG files directly into motion, Pixelmator Pro not only can open them, I'll Command Plus to zoom in a little bit here, you can see it interpreted all the text layers as text and all these shape layers as paths. The cool thing about this is you can now export this to motion and it will recognize all of these objects. So I'll choose File, Export, Motion Project and we'll give it this name here. I'll choose export. And here's our exported motion project. Note it has no media because all of the contents are inherently motion objects. Let's open this up. So here we are in motion with the same project. It looks the same. And we can see we have all of these text layers and then we have all these path layers as our shape layers. And sometimes there's multiple paths. But everything in here are built-in motion components. That's why there's no media with this project. And this is great because they're all vector objects, so we can scale them as much as we want. Now, the first thing I want to do is adjust the scale. I don't like how we're pushed up against the edges here. So I'll select the entire group, go to the inspector, go to the properties inspector, 
and just scale everything down a bit. That's also scaling our background. So I'll just scroll to the bottom and there's our background and I'll scale that back up again. And because this background is a shape, if I go to the shape inspector, I can change its color. And I'll do a little light blue so it looks a little bit like ocean. Now let's look at the text here. First of all, I'm going to turn off this createdwithpaintmaps.com, although it's nice to give them attribution since it's totally free. And I'll select all of our remaining text layers. I can change all the fonts at once. I'll just choose a traditional font here. And I'll make it bold. If I press Command forward slash, we can hide the selection area so we can see the text more easily. And then because these are text objects that are independent, I can move them independently. So I'm just going to move Europe over a little bit here. And then I notice that this legend isn't really aligned correctly. So I'll select each of our text layers for the legend. And then we can move them all at once. I'll go to the Properties Inspector and just drag on Y to move those down into position. Now, because these are text objects, we can animate them. So I'll select one of them, go to Behaviors, Text Animation. I'll choose Type On. I'll trim it so it's not quite so long. And now that one word types on. I'll copy it, Command C, select the rest of the text layers, and press Command V to paste it to all of them. And now all of our text types on. Hold the Option key down and close the group. Let go of the Option key and open it again so it collapses these back down. Now each of our continents consists sometimes of multiple shapes. So if we look, for instance, at North America here and we pop it open, there's a lot of shapes here. But if we want to change the color of, let's say, everything here, we can select all of these shapes. I'll scroll down and hold the Shift key down, select the last one there. They're all selected. Go to the Shape Inspector, and I can change the color of all those shapes in one shot. Now, let's say that we want to zoom into Africa. So I really want to highlight it. So what I'm going to do first is I'll add a camera, switch to 3D, and then I'm going to add the basic motion move behavior to that camera. I'll say I want that move to start after this text animation has started. So I'll tap I for an endpoint and last say about that long. You can always adjust it later. And then I'll take the on-screen control and position it right over Africa. And then I'll drag left on that center control to zoom in. Right about there. I'll also go to the inspector and change the speed to ease both. And if we play that back, we have a nice push into Africa and everything stays nice and crisp. Now, you might wonder why the letters are blurred, but all we need to do is change the render pop-up menu to best. And very quickly, we've got a little animated map with a nice camera move. Let's accentuate Africa a little bit more. What I'll do is open up the group containing it and focus on the primary path right here. I'll toggle that on and off. And I'm gonna animate this outline here. Right now it's set to zero, but I'm gonna crank the width up a little bit. And I'll set the Last point off, set to zero, and add a keyframe. Move forward in time, and then move that to 100%, so that after we zoom in, we add a little outline out there to focus our attention on this continent. Now let's add that drop shadow back. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new group, Shift-Command-N, move it below the existing group, Command Shift left bracket and make it a 2D group. Then I'm going to open this main group up and drag this path, which is the background, into this group. That way, this background never moves when the camera moves. It's not affected by the camera because it's in a 2D group 
at the highest level. Next, I'll close this group and select it. You'll notice I can't add a drop shadow to it because it's not available here in the Properties Inspector. That's because it's a 3D group. If I convert it to a 2D group by clicking this icon here, then I can enable the drop shadow and you can see the drop shadow right there. I can change its distance and I can change its angle, maybe something more like that. But now if I scrub through the project, we no longer get the camera movement. So what we can do is take this group, shift command G to put it inside another group. And now that 2D group is inside a 3D group. So we get both the drop shadow and we get our camera animation. And I'll just turn off those grid lines so we don't see the 3D grid and play that through one more time. Finally, I'll add a little fade in, fade out behavior to the 2D group. So at the start, we don't see anything. And then it fades on and we animate and push in. Now in this project, the only thing we used Pixelmator Pro for was to convert an SVG file, but it does so much more. If you haven't yet seen my tutorial called Pixelmator Pro for Motion, definitely check out the intro video that will show you some of the possibilities of this amazing combination. Please let me know what you thought about today's episode by leaving a comment below. Subscribe so you can get updated on our future content. And we'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.